Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we are going to be playing with lots of stencils and masks to make a quick quote page in our journal. So I've got this background that I had in my um, Dilutions journal, which I really liked, but I wanted to do something with it. And so I had these leftover pieces of collage tissue paper. So these are just from um, deli paper that I had that I'd stenciled, stenciled over from using a darkroom door stencil with lots of different words on it. Um, I love doing this because I get these beautiful bright colours that I can collage onto my page. And um, particularly using pink over the pink, it sort of just gives an extra interest to the page. Now in the long run, when I did this, I really like this page when I finished, but I actually really like that background to begin with. And I sort of ended up completely covering over it which is okay because that's what it's all about. I was having fun doing this page, um, but I sort of went back at the end and go, I really like what I've done, but I wish I'd kept that page too and done this on another page. So um, there was just that moment of regret when I'd finished it off. So I torn up all the tissue paper and glued it down onto the page. And um, then I decided to get out this mask set. Now this is um, a set by Dina Wakeley. It's not, I put off buying this set for a long time because I really didn't think I would ever use it. I'm not a particular, particularly botanic person, um, but I've just loved using this um, in so many different ways. I've used it as seaweed, I've used it as sort of secret gardens, and I just get really carried away with it, which you'll see at the end. Um, I just love using it in all its different bits and pieces. So the first thing I'm doing is going over my background with a sponge and some white paint and using the masks. So the masks are the inside bits of the stencils um, which are really useful to use um, and you can certainly make things like this yourself. You could probably make a stencil like this yourself. It's a fairly simple shape, it's particularly if you're pretty good with um, a craft knife or if you've got a cutting machine you can get it to cut out something. You can even use a die cut to do something like this. So I'm just sort of putting it over the background and again, I've probably got people screaming at the screen, but why are you doing that? You're covering up your background. But this is my form of relaxation. I've done the page on the right hand side, which I hate. It really bugs me and I'm going to have to do something with it. Um, and I had this page sitting next to it and it's just like, I just need to do something that I really like. And I really like doing this technique. So I just thought, no, nah, go for it. Just do what you like until you're happy and you've forgotten making the page that you did on the other side. So now I'm using the stencil part of my stencil and I'm using Payne's Grey which um, obviously by its name is a, a dark grey rather than a black and it's a really handy colour to have in your arsenal because it's just not as intense as a black. If I would put a black on this it would be really overpowering. By having it as a grey it just it's there, obviously it's, it is a focus, but it's just not as in your face as if I had had um, a pure black on this page. So when I don't have very much paint on my sponge, I'm sort of going into the background and doing sort of ghost sponging in the background. So I've got this really light effect in the background, sort of filling up the space. You will notice too, I have put my paint out on my board I sort of sponge it into the sponge beforehand and then tap it off on the page and that's how you avoid getting um, big lumps of paint seeping under your stencils. If you're sort of getting lots of um, seepage, you're probably putting too much paint either on your, your paintbrush or on your sponge as you're sponging. So once I've finished doing this, I'm going back in with a white paint pen. Uh, this is a fine Posca paint pen and just doing really scratchy lines around my figures. Um, this is a technique that if you follow Inky Quill, Adele Qu um, Toomey from Inky Quill, she does a lot with her stencils. I love the effect because as those people who follow my channel know I'm really terrible at um, leaving white space on my page and I've found this is a really handy way of putting white back on my page and having a little bit of control about it. Plus I just get to do sort of really squiggly lines. And I really like mark making but I like having a bit of a stencil or a template to mark make around. So having something there that I can just doodle over the top of is really perfect. particularly. Sort of on a day like this where 
I was feeling frustrated from doing the page before. I had something on the my iPad listening to it that I wasn't particularly paying attention to and I was just having fun in this sort of dreamy state just doodling over the top. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't actually intending to um, outline everything. I was just going to do those initial larger images but I, I had fun and then I decided I need to do double lines over things. So <laughs> you can see it was a, it was a, a lesson in just having fun and just going with the flow. Um, in my dilutions journal or in the dilutions journal you'll notice that yellow piece of paper at the side it's actually an envelope at the front of um, the journal that you can keep sort of ephemera and stuff in I've never actually used it but it's a great place for testing out your pens going along it's just it sticks out at the edge and it's a brilliant place for either cleaning off your pens or repriming them as you go so as I was doing this I decided I really liked the background I was already miffed at myself because I had um, lost the background that I originally really liked. I'm now just cleaning up the extra paint I had because I just stuck my sticker book in it so you know clean up before you go that's that's a rule of thumb there but you can see how quick it dries onto the page um, it's quite magic seeing it sort of dry like that. So there's uh, two more pages that I'm really excited to get my hands on I really love that blue page on the other side. Um, so the quote I decided to write down was this too shall pass partly because I really like the quote and I was just thinking of the frustration of doing the right hand page will pass you've you've done this um, and you know you've enjoyed doing this the other thing is um, at the moment I'm a school I'm a school teacher primary school teacher and um, we're doing a physics unit in science at the moment and if you have ever checked out um, OK Go on YouTube, they're a band who do the most amazing music videos um, using all sorts of things, but in particular for this song, This Too Shall Pass, is um, a Rube Goldberg machine where it's a crazy, crazy machine. And the whole song is worked out using this machine. So um, just completely off topic, but... Um, it's it's worthwhile having a look at it because it's just magic how how they get it all to work. Um, talking about being a school teacher, uh, big spelling mistake again on the page. I do correct it at the end though, <laughs> so um, my I should have two two zero two zeros two O's in two. Um, <clears throat> You know the way you look at something and think it's not right but you can't quite work it out at the time? Yeah, so I, I did work it out before too long which was good. So I'm just going in again with my paint pen and just putting a little bit of shadowing on my words just to kind of stick them out from the background. They do, while it's a bit hard with the shine on the page, you can see here the difference between the pure black and the Payne's grey in the background and just having that little bit of white on it really pops it out from the background. So this is a really simple page, it was lots of fun to do and thank you so much for watching, until next time, bye for now.